Hello and welcome back to Game My Movie Recap Channel. Today, we're so excited to tell you the storyline of an action crime movie of 2005, one of the most underrated movies starring the legendary Jason Statham, titled Chaos. Telling us about two detectives who are tasked with apprehending a dangerous bank robber who plans elaborate heists, leading to a thrilling game of cat and mouse with high stakes and unexpected twists, testing their skills and determination in a race against time to prevent the next deadly move. So without further ado, let's get straight to the video. But before we start, please support our channel by subscribing and click the bell icon for future notifications. Now, let's start. In the beginning of the movie, a car is shown being involved in an accident. It turns out that the car was being chased by the police as they were known to be a gang of robbers who had just robbed a bank. Shortly after, a woman emerges from the robber's car and it becomes evident that she is their hostage. The leader of the robbers also steps out, holding the woman at gunpoint. The next day, news on TV reports that the leader of the robbers and their female hostage were killed by two police officers named Connors and Jason during the previous night. Both officers are found guilty of their actions as they inadvertently took the life of the female hostage. Consequently, Connors and Jason are dismissed from the police force and sentenced to three months in prison. After three months, the movie shows a group of robbers entering a bank and taking everyone inside as hostages. Soon, the police arrive and the leader of the robbers makes contact with the police outside. The leader demands that Connors comes to the scene, threatening to harm all the hostages if he doesn't comply. Consequently, the police chief goes to pick up Connors from his home as he has just been released from prison. The police chief urges Connors to go to the scene of the robbery as the leader of the robbers insists on his presence. He promises to reinstate Connors as a police officer if he follows his orders. Finally, Connors agrees and they both head to the scene of the robbery. Upon arriving there, Connors is tasked by the police chief to contact the leader of the robbers. The police chief also asks a detective named Shane to work together with Connors to capture the robbers. Unbeknownst to them, Connors has already contacted the leader of the robbers, known as Lorenz. Lorenz reveals that he is the brother of the leader of the gang, whom Connors killed three months ago. Now, Lorenz intends to avenge his brother's death by targeting Connors. After the call ends, Connors orders the SWAT team to break down the door as he and Shane are going to enter the bank. However, when the SWAT team attempts to break in, there is a sudden explosion. As a result of the explosion, some SWAT team members are killed and the hostages start running out. Connors and Shane then enter the bank, but unfortunately, they don't find Lorenz, the leader of the robbers, or anyone else. Here, Connors tries to check the CCTV, but it turns out that the CCTV is not functioning. Sometime later, Shane, the detective, is shown replaying Connors' conversation with Lorenz. After dissecting all of Lorenz's words, Shane assumes that Lorenz is now employing the chaos strategy or strategy executed by creating chaos in which the police have to connect one event to another if they want to solve the case. Afterward, Shane informs Connors and invites him to continue their conversation at a cafe. Here, Connors admits that he doesn't understand the chaos theory at all, so Shane explains everything to him. Then, Connors invited Shane to return to the office, and he gave him $10 to pay for his drink. At the same time, Shane took Connors $10 and replaced it with his $20. Upon arriving at the office, two senior detectives informed Connors and Shane that they had just seen one of the fugitives on the CCTV footage from the robbery incident. They suspected that the fugitive had a connection to Lorenz, so they decided to prioritize capturing the fugitive first. The two senior detectives had found the address of the fugitive and immediately asked Connors and Shane to join them in apprehending him right away. However, when they arrived at the location, they were greeted with a gunshot from the fugitive. Connors quickly fought back, and a shootout ensued. Unfortunately, the fugitive managed to escape through a window and fled using a car. Then, Shane pursued the fugitive by taking one of the motorcycles from the locals. Unfortunately, Shane fell from the motorcycle, allowing the fugitive to escape freely. However, not far from there, another car suddenly crashed into the fugitive's car. It turned out to be Connors, who immediately confronted the fugitive. After the confrontation, Connors returned to the fugitive's house to search for evidence linking him to the robbery case involving Lorenz. Upon arriving there, the two senior detectives had already found a bag of money belonging to the fugitive. 
However, they realized that the money was not from the morning robbery, but was actually evidence from the investigators. They knew this because the money had a distinct fragrance, which was a habit of the investigators to mark it as evidence. The case became even more complicated as they now suspected that someone within the police force was involved and had helped the fugitive steal the money from the investigators. Afterwards, Connors and Shane went to the investigator's office to inquire about the police officer who had visited the place. Upon arriving, Connors immediately asked a new guard about anyone who had entered or exited the premises. The guard showed Connors the signature of a detective named Callow, who frequently visited the office. The last time he came, he was carrying a bag of evidence containing money. This raised suspicions for Connors and Shane that Detective Callow was involved with the fugitive and Lorenz. Subsequently, Connors and Shane requested permission from the police chief to apprehend Detective Callow for his involvement with the fugitive and Lorenz. However, in the midst of their discussion, the police chief received news that Detective Callow had just been found dead in his home. Upon hearing this, Connors and Shane immediately rushed to Detective Callow's house. Upon arriving at the scene, they found a printed map of the bank that had been robbed earlier by Lorenz's gang. Connors and Shane became even more convinced that Callow was involved in the heist. Unfortunately, Callow was no longer alive, so they couldn't extract any further information from him. In the end, Shane decided to return to the bank to recheck the CCTV, which had malfunctioned the day before. Arriving there, Shane brought along an IT team to fix the CCTV. Eventually, they managed to turn on the CCTV, but it seemed that none of the robbers were captured on the CCTV footage. Then, Connors and Shane invited the two senior detectives to have dinner together, while the IT team continued to examine the CCTV footage, suspecting that Lorenz, the chief robber, had hacked it. Sometimes later, it showed Connors, Shane, and the two senior detectives dining at an Italian restaurant. Suddenly, Shane received news that the IT team had obtained new information about the hack bank CCTV, and they even identified the hacker. Immediately, Connors and the others headed to the location of the hacker. The scene shifts to the hacker, who just realized that his identity has been exposed. However, when he attempts to escape, Lorenz suddenly appears and eliminates him. It turns out that Lorenz is willing to eliminate any of his henchmen who have been discovered by the police, including Callow. When Connors and Shane arrive, they only find the lifeless body of the hacker. Shane catches a glimpse of Lorenz escaping in his car, but fails to stop him. Shortly after, Connors and Shane go to the hospital to interrogate the fugitive. At first, the fugitive remains tight-lipped, but when Shane threatens to inject a lethal substance into his intravenous feeding bottle, he finally provides information he knows about Lorenz. The fugitive reveals that tomorrow night, Lorenz will hold a meeting at his old house with his henchmen to discuss their next robbery. The next day, Connors and Shane inform the police chief about the information, and they immediately devise a strategy to capture Lorenz at the location. However, after waiting for a considerable time, Lorenz doesn't come out, so Connors decides to enter the house. Inside, Shane and the others are discovered by Lorenz's henchmen, leading to a shootout. Fortunately, Shane and the team manage to eliminate Lorenz's henchmen. As they prepare to follow Connors inside, one of the senior detectives notices a time bomb that is about to explode. Quickly, he urges Shane and the others to get out while Connors is still facing one of Lorenz's henchmen, and eventually the explosion occurs. From a distance, Lorenz can be seen smiling, as everything is going according to his plan. Eventually, Shane and two senior detectives manage to survive, but Connors loses his life due to the explosion. Shane and the remaining detective are seen in a state of reverie as they witness Connors' body being evaluated. The next day, while Shane is at the office, a bank employee informs him that they have lost another $1 billion. This time, it's not a regular robbery, but the bank system has been hacked, allowing the robbers to easily transfer $1 billion. Shane assumes that this is surely Lorenz's doing since he had previously hacked the bank's CCTV. As Shane is about to get into his car, he receives a call from Lorenz, who warns him to stop pursuing him if he doesn't want to end up like Connors. Undeterred, Shane responds that he will soon eliminate Lorenz and recover the stolen $1 billion. He then decides to interrogate the new guard of the investigation room because he feels something is amiss with Callow's signature from yesterday when he took one bag of evidence money. Shane suspects that the guard has forged Callow's signature and was the one who brought the bag of evidence money. The guard admits that he was the one who brought the bag and handed it over to the fugitive, who was supposed to deliver it to Lorenz. 
He did all of this because he held a grudge against Kahlo, who had always treated him disrespectfully as a new guard. Lorenz promised to eliminate Kahlo if the guard agreed to take the money. Hearing all of this, Shane is taken aback and comments that Lorenz is too clever as he had even managed to trap Connors. Suddenly, the guard reveals that Lorenz has always been one step ahead of Connors. Shane questions how the guard would know such information given that he is just a new guard at the investigation office. Shane then threatens to harm the guard's family if he doesn't tell the truth. In the end, the guard admits that he is actually one of Lorenz's henchmen sent to work at the investigation office. Lorenz is revealed to be Jason, Connor's former police partner, who had once shot the head of the robbers and a female hostage. All of this was driven by Jason's resentment towards the police for dismissing him, leading him to stay one step ahead of them at all times. Upon learning the truth, Shane and his colleague immediately ambushed Lorenz, who was enjoying a cup of coffee at a cafe, leading to a shootout. Then, Jason runs to the pier, with Shane chasing after him, leading to a fierce fist fight. Ultimately, Shane manages to eliminate Jason using his weapon. Feeling relieved, Shane believes that his task is finally coming to an end. He goes to a cafe with his colleague, as their only remaining duty is to find the $1 billion that Jason had stolen. As Shane takes out $10 to pay, he notices a distinct scent emanating from the money. He suddenly remembers that this scent is the same as the one from the evidence money at the investigation office. It dawns on him that he got the money from Connors, whom he exchanged money with during their coffee break. From that realization, Shane senses something amiss, wondering how Connors could have possessed that money. Quickly, Shane rushes to Connors' house to search for clues. Upon arrival, he finds a book titled Chaos. As Shane opens the book, he discovers marked key points inside it. This raises suspicions in Shane, as he remembers that Connors claimed to have no knowledge of the chaos theory, despite apparently having studied it for a long time through this book. Without hesitation, Shane orders his colleague to contact the airport and halt any flights under the name Connors. However, his colleague informs him that there are no passengers listed under that name. Shane then notices the name James written in the margin of the book, referring to the author of Chaos. He quickly deduces that Connors must have faked his death and is now using the name James as an alias. Convinced of this theory, Shane heads to the airport, determined to catch Connors, who he believes is hiding under the pseudonym James. Upon arriving at the airport, Shane immediately inquires about passengers named James to the airport staff. Before the staff could respond, Shane receives a call from someone who turns out to be Connors. Shane's suspicions were correct. Connors is indeed alive and the mastermind behind all the robberies. Connors admits to everything, including his collaboration with Jason or Lorenz and how they sought revenge against the police force for unfairly dismissing them. It was Connors who orchestrated all the plans while Jason and his crew executed them. As a result, Connors' name is now completely clear, especially since he was presumed dead. With intent, Connors orders the SWAT team to breach the bank's doors, knowing that Jason had planted bombs at each entrance. He had also rigged a bomb at Lorenz's house to fake his death, making it appear as though he died in the explosion while he actually escaped disguised as a firefighter. Although Jason didn't survive, Connors has now acquired the $1 billion and plans to flee the country, assuming a new identity. Hearing this, Shane tirelessly continues his search for Connors amid the sea of people, with a casual tone, Connor simply tells Shane that he might as well give up because there's no way he can find him. Finally, Connor smirks while boarding his private jet, carrying the $1 billion. And the movie finally ends. What do you think of the movie? Drop your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit like and support the channel by subscribing and click the bell icon so that you won't miss our future recaps. And if you have any movies or series you want us to recap, please do tell us in the comments section as well. And that's about it. See you all next time.